High Altitude Balloon Company Space Perspective is done. According to the interim CEO, Michael Savage, quote, the board has at this stage asked that we wind down the company and we have engaged with council to do so. This is an ongoing story over the past month or so that is still ongoing, but basically it comes down to Space Perspective ran out of money. They have two lawsuits, at least two lawsuits pending right now. The Space Coast Regional Airport has evicted Space Perspective because they owe over $90,000. And because Space Perspective doesn't have the money apparently to get their stuff out of the airport, they're also looking to repossess the items that Space Perspective isn't getting out of the airport with that eviction. The eviction case is said to be heard next week in Vieira here on the Space Coast. And then separately, an executive search firm says that Space Perspective hired two people that they helped them find and Space Perspective owes them $29,000 plus interest for those fines. And it's not official yet, but I'm hearing word that Space Perspective employees are looking to sue the company. I'll talk about that more later. I wanna jump back. Despite the name, Space Perspective is not a space company. Company. And I know some of you are disagreeing with me right now, and that's okay. But here's the thing. Space Perspective is a high-altitude balloon company with a gondola, and that gondola was going to hold people inside of it and take them up to about 30 kilometers. The internationally agreed upon place where space begins, even though it's there's no firm line, but that is taken just because we like round numbers at about 100 kilometers. That's the Von Karman line. And here in the United States, we use 50 miles or 80 kilometers. So 30 kilometers is well below that. Now, Space Perspective and other people who advocate for calling this space say that it's above most of the atmosphere and you can see the blackness of space and the curvature of the planet. And yeah, I think that's great. It's a, it's a beautiful view. Although the atmosphere does extend beyond 100 kilometers, we're going with formal definitions here. So formally, it is not a space company. However, it was actually put under the same rules as spacecraft here in the Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA in the United States. So that's what Space Perspective was working with. They were building their gondola to the specs of a spacecraft that would need to be licensed here in the United States. Space Perspective actually goes back a dozen years and in 2012 is when Worldview was founded. And why am I talking about a separate company? I'll get to that. But Worldview was a high altitude balloon company founded in 2012. In early 2013, I got an offer from one of the founders to put down a deposit at a heavy discount to be an early customer. And at the time I was a graduate student, so I had no money. But even if I had taken him up on that offer, I would not be flying today because Worldview has pivoted but they didn't pivot immediately. Their intention was to do uncrewed balloon flights and then also have a crewed version of those balloons. Now, if you go on their website, they pretty much scrubbed all mention of crewed flights, space tourism, any of that. But back in 2021, they actually made a big announcement and they hired someone specifically for space tourism, the vice president of tourism and exploration. He only lasted a year, so I'm guessing they pivoted about 2013 or so. And now you will not see any mention in worldview of space tourism, but that is how the company was founded. Right now, I think they just found that it's much more lucrative to do high altitude Earth observation. Um, you can probably guess why there are certain customers within the United States government who will continuously fund that kind of effort. We're going to talk about whether there's a business case for high altitude balloon tourism. The reason I bring up Worldview is because it was founded by Jane Poitner and Tabor McCollum. These two people have worked together. They are husband and wife. They've worked together on other projects in the past and they founded Worldview with some other co-founders and then they left the company. I'm not privy to know why they left the company, but there was definitely some internal disagreements. So they left the company in 2018. They founded Space Perspective in 2019. And Space Perspective was founded to do pretty much the same thing that Worldview was founded to do. High altitude balloons, space tourism, and they were doing test flights here in Florida, but they wanted to operate globally. So last year in September, they did a test flight here on the Cape. A 550 foot tall polyethylene hydrogen filled balloon went on a six hour test flight, ending with a splashdown in the middle of the Gulf. And you can fill in the blank which Gulf I'm talking about. Last year, they had a peak of nearly 140 employees. They were ramping up as they were intending to have crewed flights this year in 2025. But as startups go, they were having financial problems. They were having investor problems. According to a Talk of Titusville article, which I will link all the articles down below, the employees that they interviewed anonymously said that there was a mismanagement of funds. About 50% of the money, they said, went into marketing 
which didn't leave a ton left for development. Now, according to the Space Force Active website, they are still planning for 10 uncrewed flights this year and operations in 2026. But of course, that's not happening now because they have furloughed just about all their employees. They have a small core team. I think they're trying to still raise money. They've been working overseas to try to find wealthy investors in other countries but they have not to date succeeded. And in fact, there's recent articles suggesting uh, the words they used was ghosted. The employees have been ghosted. The employees are saying that the company putting them on furlough, you know, furloughing them was their way of getting around a severance package in their contract and also the Warren Act that needs a, a certain time in the state of Florida to tell employees when they're about to be laid off. So there is an on, there are ongoing talks about whether or not the employees will sue Space Perspective for essentially firing them without warning and breaking that contract. Now, one thing that one of the employees said in one of those interviews was that the price tag of $125,000 was way too low. And that is where I completely agree because for years I've known that that price was not going to get the job done. I felt like they were trying to operate with that Virgin Galactic model where Virgin Galactic wanted to sell thousands of tickets at a low price for their suborbital flights. But then they realized a few years ago that they were just not going to make enough money to get to operations with that kind of price tag. So they increased it to significantly, almost doubled it. Space Protective never did that. Space Protective never actually increased their price. So it stayed super low. I don't know how many tickets they sold. They never said, but I can imagine that they just did not have enough funding coming in from those deposits, plus the funding coming in from investors to actually make a difference when it came to getting this product to operations. So Space Perspective, unfortunately, is pretty much dead, which I honestly think is a shame because even though it wasn't a space company, I kind of really loved the idea and I really kind of wanted to do that. I would, you know, as much as I love rockets, I would also love to see just the calm coverage of the earth for six hours, just, just chill. It seems like a really nice idea but they're not alone in this idea of high altitude balloon tourism. A company in Spain, Zero to Infinity, has been operating since 2009. They unfortunately also ran into financial difficulties. They had some test flights, 2017 or so, and then the company really hasn't done anything in years. They've been searching for investors. The company is pretty much defunct at this point, unfortunately. They were originally hoping to have commercial flights 2013 to 2015 timeframe, and here we are 2025. It hasn't happened. EOS-X is another Spanish company founded in 2021, very similar plan as Zero to Infinity. And in fact, there was a lawsuit that EOS-X lost when it, come, when it came to uh, trade secrets and intellectual property with Zero to Infinity. As far as I can tell, EOS-X is a paper project with no hardware. Zofalto is a French company. It was founded in 2012. So they've been working on this for quite some time. They expected crewed flights or you know people on board in 2024, that hasn't happened. They haven't announced anything in recent dates or updates in a, a year or two. Um, they still seem to be operating. They still seem to be doing something behind the scenes. Japanese company Space Balloon, founded in 2021, had some test flights as well. They had planned for their first crewed mission in 2021. They haven't had any updates in a few years. I don't know if this company still exists. Their website's still up, but uh, they haven't said anything in a while. And another Japanese company, Iwaya, they were founded in 2016. They actually have hardware. They have a, a gondola that they showed off. They expected flights in 2023, which of course did not happen, but they do seem to be working on things um, publicly. They have been posting on social media and updating the website and all of that. So you can see that there's a lot of interest in this concept, but not a lot of progress forward. No one seems to have figured out how to make this work yet. Four years ago, I wrote a report on high altitude balloons and through all my research and interviews with CEOs of some of these companies, I determined that this is a very difficult subject. This is a very difficult area to make money in. I gave Space Perspective the highest ranking in terms of who I thought would succeed, but even for them, I gave them under 50%, it was 40 something percent likelihood of success and all the rest were below that. So for all of these companies, the trick is having enough funding for a net, as many years as it takes to get a prototype that is safe enough to fly people on board. Because similarly to crude spaceflight, whenever you add people, it becomes so much more complex. You're risking human lives. And this has just not been done before. There of course have been crude balloons, but not up that high. Is there a business case for high altitude balloons? Well, I think there could be, but not yet and not any of these. I don't believe any of the companies that I just stated are going to be wildly successful. I do believe that they are building upon a foundation that will add to a base of knowledge 
that could contribute to another company, a new player that has a wealthy founder or a wealthy benefactor or government backing, like strong government backing to get to the finish line and actually make this kind of thing successful. But is it operationally successful? Once they get to operations, can they actually make a profit from this? Are there enough customers? I think there could be. Um, time will tell how people view the concept of space flight, both suborbital and orbital, and whether there's enough interest built up that people are willing to spend the money on a high altitude balloon, and whether they would supplement their space tourism with high altitude balloon tourism, or skip the space tourism and go with high altitude balloon tourism. I don't know, but if someone wants to fund me to do that study, that would be a very interesting study to do. I'm curious from you, would you take a high altitude balloon flight? Let me know in the comments. And I have previously looked at orbital versus suborbital space tourism. If you're interested in that, watch that video next.